your controlled assessment. So when you're talking about the poem, you need to sound a little bit more effective. You need to improve your vocabulary. So two keywords today, you need to learn them and start using them, ventriloquizing and empathy. It also links with our poem, The Man He Killed, that we're gonna study today. So I'll give you one more minute. Make sure you've got those <coughs> keywords down, and then we're gonna talk about them. One more minute. That's exactly, it's somebody that yeah. would speak like on the other side of the room, right? So if I were to use ventriloquizing, use it as a verb, as an action, well, what do you think that would mean? I don't know. Well, kind of. So I would like for you to imagine in today's poem, you've got a man, all right, who's writing about the man he killed, but the actual poet is not <coughs> writing from his personal perspective. Is that clear? He's at a pub, standing beside some random man and he's overhearing his conversation. So today I want you to imagine when we study the poem, you've got myself, maybe I'm Thomas Hardy the poet, all right? And he's writing from the perspective of the man What's over here. Name? So I want you to think of it, if I was speaking on behalf of him, all right, this is the silly part. Hey, um, Judy. Oh. Do you? Yeah? Why do birds so anyways, you get the point. So the idea of it, the idea of it is basically ventriloquizing. I want you to think of a definition. If I was ventriloquizing, hi boys. Is anyone here want to play rugby? Uh, not right now. Thank you. Oh my Cheers. <laughs> All right. Um, what I want you to think about is when you're ventriloquizing, the poet is ventriloquizing the voice of the other man in the pub and his personal experience. So that's what you need to remember today is that you've got my silly frog over here is actually the man all right that our poet <coughs> is overhearing it's not the poet writing from his personal perspective which is very different to the last poem we've been studying so if you can take one minute i'd like you to try and come up with your own definition for, for ventriloquizing based on the little demonstration wow. off you go what does it mean to ventriloquize something off you go <coughs> So when you're writing your controlled assessments, make sure that when you talk about this poem, you're not speaking and saying, Thomas Hardy felt. It wasn't Thomas Hardy's feelings. It was Thomas Hardy listening in on a conversation. He was thinking, actually, I can understand what that man is saying, or I can understand <coughs> what that man is thinking. All right, so definition of ventriloquizing then, help us out. Ria, what did you come up with? Uh, it's writing in someone else's position or perspective. Brilliant. So writing in someone else's position or perspective. Fabulous. All right, Kieran, something else? Uh, to say or write something in somebody else's point, point of view. Fabulous. To say or write in somebody else's point of view. Perfect. Does anybody know the term empathy then that would fit into ventriloquizing? What does the word empathy mean? Does anybody know that? Yes. It when you put yourself in their shoes or... Excellent. When you put yourself in someone else's shoes, what is it that they're trying to make you do? If you empathize, you feel exactly how they're meant to feel. Exactly how they're meant to feel. You don't feel sorry for them. You feel exactly what they're meant to feel. Oh, I empathize with you. You empathize with me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so when you're thinking of ventriloquizing, he's speaking on the other side of it, all right? But he's also trying to feel or make us feel or empathize, right, with what's happening, with what the man in the pub is speaking about. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So, second definition, <coughs> on your own, what does empathy mean? Off you go, one minute. That could have been me. Any thoughts? Yeah, but they're not really nice. All right, not something more- Not appropriate for school. Yeah. Not appropriate for school. All right, help us out. Poppy? Um, the thing on the news about the boat sinking. Brilliant. So the thing on the news about the boat sinking, the cruise ship that sank, fabulous. So when you thought that could have been me, how do you felt? All of us can think, oh, <coughs> maybe I'll go on a cruise one day. Could have been my cruise, right? How did that make you feel? It made me feel like scared that it could have been anybody. Yeah. Could have been someone in your family. Could have been anybody. Say that again? Could have been someone in your family. Could have been somebody <coughs> in your family, perfect. Mm. So 
right away you think, oh my goodness, that could have been me, could have been somebody that I knew. That's what this poem's all about today, all right? Literally, let me take you through a small little story about um, this man at the pub. So Thomas Hardy, our writer, he's gone to the pub as usual, all right, and this just happens to be after the Boer War. And he's sitting there having a drink, and beside him is a soldier that's just come back from the Boer War. And he's sitting there talking to this man beside him. All right, so Kieran, can you come up? I want you to sit here. All right, you're going to be the soldier sitting there, pretend to have a drink. Yes? Help me out, Stephen. Come on up. Ugh. Brilliant. All right, the two of you are just sitting there having a drink, right? Fab. And I'm the author, Thomas Hardy, standing here just listening in. Now, I want you to think about it. You've just come back and you've been at the front line fighting. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Front, front line fighting, you've come back. Now what happened to you is a man <coughs> came up to you, literally, you're at the front line, you've never met him, never spoke to him, and both of you draw your guns. Good? What's going to happen? Are you going to shoot me? Am I going to shoot you? What are you going to do? Shoot him first. You're going to shoot me first, right? Why? Because you don't want to die yourself. You don't, absolutely. You don't want to die yourself. Why do you not want to die? Oh you don't, absolutely. You've gone to war, you don't want to die because who are you going to upset? Friends and family. Yeah. That's exactly it. Friends and family. You've got friends, family, a life all right, behind you. Absolutely brilliant. I want you to think about being in the exact same position. So everybody, I want you to empathize with these two men. They've just been to the front line, they've come face to face with somebody <coughs> else, and you've had to kill someone. Get it? Got it? I'm speaking over here about the man he killed, the title of our poem today, all right? I want you to think about how if you were the other man in front of you, okay, that you killed, I want you to empathize with him and the two of you, right now, I want you to quickly <coughs> have a conversation about how you'd feel, all right, about killing that man and not knowing him and not knowing his family. Think about if you were in his position, the man that you shot and both of you have the same conversation together about how you just killed someone. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah? Okay. I want you to think about how you feel. So put yourself in issues, empathize, all right, with the soldiers that just killed someone. You killed him and you have no reason why. Okay? And but that man could have been you. There is a reason, because hey, because that man was going to shoot you. Excellent. That man was going to shoot you, but he was only going to shoot you because, because you were going to shoot him you were going to shoot him. Fact, that's exactly what I want you to talk about. How you felt about having to be placed in that situation. Right, quickly, I'll give you one minute, just talk it out a little bit. <coughs> yeah? Stephen Stark? Um, well, seeing that man there with a gun point up to me, it was just, it, it don't really like being in that position. It's just scary and straight away you just have to react. It's the first thing that comes to you if you're both holding a gun and it's just, you both have been put in exactly the same position. He knows exactly how you're feeling. Maybe both of you didn't want to be there. It's just, it's just how it turned out that way. Kieran? Uh, what? Uh, so what? How, do, how do you feel about killing a man that you've never <coughs> met and could have a family just like you? Yeah, but That's all right, be honest. I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's all right. You're going to die. You're going to die, yeah? Well, or just kill them. Exactly. You're gonna die or just kill them. Now let me turn it on its head. You met him at the front line, so you killed him. Now the two of you have just met at the pub. Kieran, you just bought him a drink. You don't know him, just like you didn't know that man. Oh, his drink. Bought him a drink, there you go. Now, how do you feel about each other? You've just met. Would you shoot him? Uh. No. Would you shoot him? No. No? Why? Because he seems friendly. He seems friendly, yeah. Because I just bought him a drink. You just <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly <coughs> what I'm looking for. You just bought him a drink because you're at the pub. You don't know him, but you're standing there, same situation, and you bought him a drink. Yeah? Sympathy. <coughs> yeah, mean? sympathy. Uh, what's a better word for it? Instead of sympathy, you don't feel sorry for each other. You? Empathize. Yes. Sorry, I'm a bit excited. That's right. You empathize with him. So, ladies and gentlemen.